Hello friends, myself Gaurav Jagdish Patak and I am working with SND College of Engineering and Research Center Yola. Welcome you in the engineering topic of engineering thermodynamics. The name of the topic on which today we are focusing is fuels. Almost all the cycles which gives the running and comes the output or consumes the fuels and by consumption the fuels they gives the mechanical energy or electrical energy or many kind of energy. So fuel is an important aspect regarding this. But not only fuels but other essential topics are is most important point of view to study this. Now what is fuel, what are the in definitions comes under the fuel classification, their clarific value and the gross and net theoretical calculations are the topic covers in this slides. The solid fuels, carbonization process, liquid fuels, gaseous fuels are the some types which are, we have covered in this slide. and. Combustion process we have seen. Now, what do you mean by fuels? It is nothing but the combustible substance which contains the carbon as the main constituent which on the proper burning gives the large amount of heat that can be used economically for domestic as well as industrial purposes. During the process of combustion of the fuel, the atoms of carbon, hydrogen, etc. are combined with oxygen and simultaneous liberation of heat. The calorific value of the fuel depends upon the two elements, that is, the carbon compounds have been used by many countries as the source of heat energy. The main source of fuel and petroleum are stored in the fuel however earth crust and are generally called as fossil fuels because they were formed from fossil remains and plants of animals. So on the basis of their use and application outcomes they are classified as per primary fuels and secondary fuels. The primary fuels are those in which they occur in nature such as coal, petroleum and natural gas. These are the some examples of primary fuels. While as the secondary fuels are those which have derived from the primary fuels that is coke, gasoline, coal etc. Both the primary and secondary fuels may be further classified into based upon their physical state, such as solid fuel, liquid fuels and gaseous fuels. Now the calorific values of the fuel is the total quantity of heat liberated when a unit mass of the fuel is burned completely. The unit of heat is calorie and it is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of the gram of water through 1 degree of centigrade temperature. The kilocalorie is equal to 1000 calories and it may be defined as the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 kg of water through the 1 degree of centigrade. Thus, 1 kilocalorie is 1000 kilo degree. Now, BTU, it is defined as the quantity of Heat required to raise the temperature of the pound of water through 1 degree Fahrenheit. This is an English unit, that is British Thermal Unit. Now what is HCV and LCV? That is higher or gross calorific value, we can denote it as HCV, while as the lower or net calorific value, we can say as the lower calorific value. Usually, all the fuels 
contained some hydrogen and when the calorific value is hydrogen containing fuel is determinative exponentially the fuel containing fuel by determining the exponent at the hydrogen is converted into steam if it produces the combustion and condensation of steam also get induced then measurement of heat which when is called higher or gross calorific value so the gross gross or higher calorific value is the total amount of heat produced when the unit mass of volume of the fuel has been burned completely and when the product of the combustion have been cooled at the room temperature the lower calorific or net calorific value we can define as the actual use of any fuel and the water vapors at the moisture content for example they are not condensed and escape as such along the hot combustible gases hence the less amount of is available so the net lower pressure of calorific value that is lower calorific value is the net heat produced when unit mass of volume of the fuel it get burns completely and the products are permitted to escape now net calorific value is nothing but gross calorific value minus latent heat of water vapor produced now gross calorific value minus mass of hydrogen per unit weight of the fuel burn and the product by 9 to latent heat of condensation of water vapor now what is dalton state regarding the calorific value of both the types that is higher and lower for calorific value from chemical composition of fuel is given by 1 upon 1000 8018 c plus 14500 h minus 0 by 8 plus 2.240 s kilo calorie where c h o s r percentage of carbon hydrogen oxygen and sulfur into the respectively in this formula the oxygen is assumed to be present in the combination with hydrogen and water now lower calorific value the dalton formula can express as scv minus 9s by 1000 into 587 kilo calorie is equals to scv minus 0.09h 587 kilo calorie per kg this is based on the fact that one part of the h by mass given 9 to h20 and later net of steam of 587 kilo calorie now what are the solid fuels we have consider here now we are stating into this calorific value calorific value higher calorific value lower calorific value but the fuels on which we have consumed energy take the energy from that are divided into solid and liquid fuels so we can consider here the solid fuels the coal is a very traditional one solid fuel and it is regarded as the fossil fuel produced from the large uh, large accumulation of vegetable and debris due to partial decay and alteration by the action of heat pressure over the millions of year coal is highly carburants matter that has been formed as a result of alteration of vegetable matters under the certain favorable condition it is cheaply composed as c h n and 0 besides the non combustible ignoric matter the classification of coals are classified on the basis of the rank and defined as the degree of extent the manufacturing and therefore is the quantitative measures of carbon content peat lignite and sub bituminous coals are referred as low rank coals while the bituminous coals and anthracites are classified as high rank in european terminology the ignites and classes of high rank in european terminology the ignite and sub bituminous are coal called soft coals while the bituminous coal and anthracite coals are tempered in the hard coal in north america technology the coal is series written in the peat 
Some examples are wood, peat, ignite, bituminous, and anthracite. Now, in order to assume the quality of coal, the following two types of analysis are done. That is, proximate analysis and ultimate analysis. In the proximate analysis, it includes the determination of moisture, vol moisture, also volatile matters, ash, fixed carbon. And this gives the quick valuable information regarding the commercial classification, which determines of suitability for particular industrial use. Ultimate analysis in includes the determination of carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, sulfur, and oxygen into the coal. Since it is used for determination of element present in the coal, it is also called as analysis. This analysis gives the exact result and are useful calculating or value for the coal using Dalton's formula. The proximate analysis for moisture and volatile matters. The moisture about 1 gram of finally powder is added to coal sample weight in the cubic. The cubic is placed inside the electric hot air oven or maintained at 105 to 110 degrees Celsius. The cubic allowed to remain the even of one hour and then taken out, which is descriptor of weight loss into weight reported moisture. Now, what are the volatile materials? That is desired sample of coal left into the crupil that is then covered with a lid which is placed on electric furnace and maintained at 925 plus or minus 20 degree, then it is from the volatile matters. Ash. Ash is the byproduct by consuming any kind of solid fuel and the residual coal into the crucible. Crucible is then heated without lid of muffled furnace and the crucible is then taken out, coated first air, then described how Heating, cooling and warehousing is related till the constant weight is obtained. The resistance is proton as on percentage basis. Fixed carbon is the percentage of fixed carbon is 100% minus the moisture of volumetric matters. Now, what are the importance of proximate analysis? The proximate analysis provides the following valuable information in the assessing the quality of coal, that is the moisture. Moisture is the lower effective calorific value of the coal, moreover, it quenches the fire into the furnace, hence lesser the moisture content, better the quality of coal. However, Presence of moisture up to 10% produces more uniform fuel bed and less of flash. Volatile matters, a high volatile metals containing the coal burns with along with the frame and high smoke and has low calorific value, hence less the volumetric matters, better the rank of the coal. Higher volatile content the coal undesirable. A high volatile matters contain the means that high proportion of fuel will be distinct and burn the gases it present into the coal may be combined. The quench for such as non-combustible gases like CO2 and N2 which volatile matters on the special scientific coal gas. Manufacturing of in the main oblique thus high volatile matter contain the coal do not cake well whereas medium voltage matters contain into their capable of building the hard strong coke into the carburization. Ash and fixed carbons are there the main points considering for that purpose. That's all from the fuels and their consumption. Thank you friend. Thank you very much.